What if I told you that in just 10 minutes from now, maybe only two, you will understand all of these codes? Sounds improbable? Impossible? It's easier than you think. Seriously. Up until last week, hex color codes were one of those mysteries of the universe that I never thought I'd figure out. I always thought they were just some random computer codes like something out of the matrix that magically translated the jumble of numbers and letters into a glorious rainbow of color. Turns out I was totally wrong, but hang on, why even bother trying to figure this out? I've been happily hurling hex hues into hundreds of programs for a very long time. And now I can dial in a color on my own without having to jump back and forth between color pickers and other programs. So by the end of this video, not only will you understand how these quirky codes of color work, you'll actually be able to read them. Yeah, you'll be able to read them. Oh, and by the way, if you're here for the first time, welcome. My name's Tamar and I'm thrilled you're here. And if you've been here before, it's fantastic to see you again. I had three moments, that's woe moments for those who like to invent words like me, that helped me understand this color code conundrum. The first and most important was breaking them apart into three pairs of letters and numbers. But how does breaking it apart actually help? Well, what if I did this to each pair and maybe added a little more information like this? Each of these pairs represents the colors in the red, green, and blue, or RGB, spectrum. You might already be familiar with this, but RGB is an additive color scheme where we can create an entire rainbow of color just by varying the amounts of the individual red, green, and blue colors. This RGB scheme is what's used to show colors on our computer monitors, TVs, phones, basically anything with a screen and so many of the programs that we use every day from stuff like Procreate to Photoshop and all the way to Microsoft Word and even Google Sheets. Yeah, they're everywhere. So now we know that each pair represents red, green, and blue ranges in the RGB spectrum. But wait a minute, I just said ranges and we haven't talked about that yet. It just so happens that this brings us to moment number two. In this RGB model, each of the colors is measured on a scale from zero, totally black, all the way up to 255, which would be the purest intensity of the color. In this case, that would be pure red. Combining different amounts of the three colors gives the full rainbow. But wait a second, with these hex codes, sure there are some numbers, that makes sense, but what about all those letters? Since when is fa a number? The Sound of Music taught me that fa lives somewhere between me and so, but if I went to my local bakery and asked to buy fa delicious chocolate chip cookies, I'm pretty sure I'm walking out of there empty handed. It turns out though, that in addition to being a long, long way to run, fa can also be a number. And if I asked for that many cookies from my local bakery, I'd probably be their favorite customer. Why? because I'd be buying 250 glorious, delicious discs of dough and chocolate. So how do we get from fa to 250? It involves a little bit of math, but the idea is easier than you think. Since we were kids, we all learned the numbers from zero to nine, and we used those individual digits to make up both small and big numbers. If I wanna be healthy and get just one cookie, I just use the number one. And yes, in my universe, one cookie is the healthy option. If I want, say, 250 cookies, I mash the numbers two, five, and zero together until I have 250. What if I'm a bit lazy though? I mean, it's way easier to say fa than it is to say 250, right? All I have to do to get from 250 to fa is to be a little bit cheeky with my numbering and replace some of those old fashioned numbers with letters. So instead of only being able to work with the numbers from zero to nine, I'm going to make up my own rules and say that A is actually 10, B is 11, C is 12, all the way up until I get to F, which is 15. So instead of having to write a one and a two to get 12, all I have to do is use the letter C to get a cool baker's dozen. Now, this is where we're gonna connect some dots and I think you're gonna have a little moment of your own. With my new super cool number and letter system, 
also known as the hexadecimal system, for anybody who's curious. For any pair of digits, instead of just 10 options, 0 through 9, I now have 16 options, 0 through 9 and A through F for every single character. You can trust me with the math on this one because, fun fact, I actually have a master's degree in chemical engineering. I'm not even kidding. But to figure out how many variations are possible in any of the hex pairs, we just multiply the 16 options for the first character with the 16 options for the second one, and that gives us a total of 256 possible combinations. That sounds a lot like the color range on those color scales we just talked about, right? If you're a detail person like me though, you might be thinking, wait a second buddy, those color scales you mentioned earlier went from 0 to 255, and you just said we have 256 options. Close, but no cigar. Just remember that in the color scale, 0 counts as a number, so 0 to 255 is actually 256 options. If we revisit our scale from before, the zero end stays the same, but with our new hex method, we can go all the way up to 255, which now translates to FF. To understand all those numbers in the middle, we need to learn how to count in hex, which is a little bit quirky, but it's one of those things that's easier for me to show you than to explain. So here's a list of normal numbers and how they translate over to hex. I'll leave this up for a second, but you can snag a personal copy of this reference and a summary of everything we talked about today in the newest resource I just added to my collection of free tools called the Treasure Trove. Head on over to blackletterfreebies.com and you can grab it today. Okay, there's just one more thing now. You might have detected one other kink in this whole system, and I had the same question too. Another thing we learned as kids is the snazzy color wheel based on three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. I mix red and yellow to get orange, yellow and blue to get green, and blue and red to get purple. So on what fantastical planet am I able to get a color like yellow from red, green, and blue? I mean, there's no amount of red, green, and blue paint that I could mix together on a canvas to get yellow, right? I won't get into all the sciencey details because believe me, I looked into it and that's a rabbit hole for another time. But for now, remember way back at the beginning of this video, I briefly mentioned that RGB is an additive color scheme. That's the key to unlocking this little mystery. For now, this color combo rubric should help. And again, you can also get this in the downloadable guide. In the sometimes unintuitive RGB universe, red and green combine to make yellow, red and blue combine to make magenta, at least that one's close to purple, right? And blue and green combine to make cyan. With these color combinations, we've now got the full spectrum we're used to. Okay, it's time to get excited because this is the moment we've been waiting for. This is where we learn to actually understand hex codes, so the next time you look at one, it won't be a total mystery. What if I showed you this code? 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. That includes no amount of any of the colors, right? so it's fully black. What about this one? FF, FF, FF. This one maxes out all of the colors, which gives us white. How about this one now? 00, zero FF, zero, 00. The middle green pair number is maxed out now, and the others are just completely zero. So this one's pure green. And now, for one last tougher test, how about FA, 2235. For now, let's not worry about the exact numbers and just take a look at this one as a whole. FA is pretty close to the max of FF, while the other two pairs are pretty low on the 0 to 255 scale. So this color combo is mostly red with a little bit of green and a little bit of blue mixed in. If you guessed a mostly red color, you're right. Congratulations, you now understand hex codes. And the next time you go to grab one to use in your upcoming masterpiece or spreadsheet, you'll understand what it means, be able to predict the color and even build your own. How cool is that? One final tip, anytime any of the pairs match like 21, 21, 21 or da, 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 it's just fun coming up with hex words, but I digress. When they match, that means it's either black white or a shade of gray in between because 
all of the RGB colors are applied equally in these cases. So 21, 21, 21 is a darker gray, while da, da, da is a much lighter one. I hope you had as much fun as I did with this little hexplanation. If you're wondering how I even got started down this rabbit hole to begin with, it came up while I was analyzing the colors of the most famous paintings in art and in history as part of a little color theory study that I'm working on. To find out the surprising lessons that I learned from digging into the colors from artists like Michelangelo, Van Gogh, Monet, Mucha, and so many others, check out my next video, which will be popping up here soon. Until this one catches up with my future self who's all done with that project though, here's another fun topic for you to check out right here. All right, my fellow Hexpert, have fun, keep playing, and I'll see you next time.